Order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Matt Kaiser. Present. Keith Perkins. Here. Richard Brooks. Here. Kenneth Vincent. Here. Brad Fredette. Present. Ken Hilton. Present. Okay, the first order of business is approval of the minutes of the meeting of the August 2nd, 2023 meeting. What's the wish of the board? Mr. Brooks. I'll make a motion to accept them. Motion to accept. Do we have a second? I have a second by Mr. Perkins. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes, raise your right hand. Okay. Abstained. Okay, Mr. Fredette and Mr. Uh, Vincent abstained. And for the purpose of the meeting, Mr. Hilton was a voting member and he, he accepted this. Okay, second order of business is old business. Any old business that may come before the board? Any board members have any old business come before the board? Ms. Crosley? None. No old business. Okay, we'll move on to new business. First order of business is uh, 3 Alpha, which is 85 Elm Street, Summersworth LLC, and 20 Green Street. Summersworth LLC are seeking an appeal from administrative decision of the Historic Dis District Commission. Ms. Crosley, I believe we have some communication on this. Yes, so the applicant submitted a request um, to continue this item to the October 4th meeting um, due to a prior commitment today that conflicts with this meeting um, where they are not able to be in attendance. Okay, so the uh, applicant is asking to be continued. Um, I don't see any reason we shouldn't. Any discussion on that? Okay, we'll entertain a motion to continue it. Mr. Fredette. Make a motion to continue. Is that enough words? Do you need anything more? Uh, date specific, please. Um, October 4th. Make a motion to continue to the October 4th, 2023 ZBA meeting. Thank you. Very good. Second. We have a motion and a second by Mr. Brooks. All the, uh, any discussion, further discussion? Okay. All those in favor of continuing to the October meeting, raise your right hand. 5-0. Passes. Second order of business, 3 Bravo. New England Barrel Company is seeking a variance from Table 4A4 to allow an industrial slash light industrial use distilled spirits plant for a property located at 497 High Street in the Residential Commercial RC District. Assessors map 40, lot 53, condo map 90, lot 53, Charlie, ZBA case 12-2023 is a public hearing. I'll open a public hearing. Ms. Crosley. Okay, so the applicant is seeking a variance from Table 4A4 to an allow an industrial slash light industrial use within the residential commercial district. The applicant is proposing to establish a distilled spirits plant with tasting area and shop for merchandise within the existing structure at 497 High Street. The proposed use is for the New England Barrel Company's products, taking deliveries from other distilleries, blending spirits for their product lines, storing spirits in barrels, and bottling products for shipment. The property has three condo units on site. Two are owned and operated by the Monroe Muffler Brick Incorporated. And the subject unit, which has a retail use of, which is AT&T, and vacant 4,600 square feet, where this use um, is proposed to occupy. The site has an existing 14,000 square foot building. If the variance is granted, um, a level of site plan review will be required applicable with the site plan review regulations. There are a few um, prior applications that have impacted this site. The site has a site plan from 1990 for the two, um, this space used to be VIP Auto, um, for Midas Muffler and VIP Auto. And there are some variances that are associated, uh, excuse me, special exceptions associated with those specific uses. Um, and the other side received a variance to allow for structure within the setbacks, which was, I believe, a dumpster. It was pretty recent with you all. They have, um, I've provided the definition of the industrial slash light industrial uses for your reference, and the applicant has addressed all five of the criteria for a variance, and therefore the board can review the application and uh, make determinations. Okay, thank you. Questions for Ms. Crosley? Okay, will the representative of the applicant come forward, state your name, and explain why we should be granting the variance. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to present tonight. My name is Chris Rice with TF Moran. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, New England Barrel Company. Uh, I apologize for any inconvenience. The president and founder of New England Barrel Company wished he could be here this evening, but he is traveling. I do have him on, on the cell phone in case there's a specific business question that comes up that I can relay and try to try to get you the answer that you need. Also with me is Katie Fleischer, who is uh, New England Barrel Company's uh, broker for, for this project. 
Um, as mentioned, we're here this evening requesting a variance from Table 4A.4 of the Summersworth Zoning Ordinance to allow an industrial light industrial use, which is a distilled spirits plant, uh, for the property located at 497 High Street. Uh, this is located within the Residential Commercial Zoning District. Um, it is a distilled, a dis it's called a distilled spirits plant by the licensing, but they don't plan to distill any beverages at this facility, and I'll get into that a little bit further. Uh, the proposed use by the applicant doesn't neatly fit into one of the allowable use categories that, uh, that are currently within the, the city's zoning ordinance. I know city staff had deemed that the primary use is the light industrial use, but there are other, com other components to the proposed project, uh, being retail and commercial uses, which would consist of a small tasting room um, and, and a small retail shop for some merchandise, which I'll go into a little bit more detail in a moment. Uh, 497 High Street, if you're familiar with the property, uh, as it was mentioned, it's an existing 14,000 square foot building. This southerly portion here uh, is all occupied by Tire Warehouse, so they occupy 7,000 square feet. AT&T uh, currently operates in this front portion or the northeastern portion of the building. And then this vacant space where we're proposing this use is in the, the rear northwest corner of the, of the existing building. Um, Abutters to the property include AutoZone uh, to the south. Directly across the street is an insurance building. Uh, to the northeast is a large shopping plaza with a various mix of commercial and retail uses. To the north is a vacant property right now, and to the west there is a separate tax map here, but there's a, a small sliver, sliver of land, and then there's Willard Pond to, to the west of us, which you can more accurately see on this map, I apologize. So that is our parcel right here. The use is proposed in that corner right there. This is Willard Pond, AutoZone, uh, and the shopping plaza. Uh, the applicant, New England Barrel Company, is looking to establish a distilled spirits plant. I'll refer to it as a DSP just for an acronym going forward uh, to produce their products at, uh, in the existing vacant space. Please note as part of this proposal, AT&T is going to be reduced. They're currently, I believe, at around 3,200 square feet. This, they would be reduced to 2,400 square feet uh, as part of this proposal, and then the remaining 4,600 square feet would be for the DSP. Uh, in this facility, they, they look to basically take in bulk uh, delivery of bulk spirits in the form of either barrels or, or totes. They blend these bulk spirits uh, from the barrels and totes to create their small batch and their small batch select product lines. They store in aged barrels containing various types of whiskey such as bourbon and rye. Uh, they bottle their products for shipment to their distributors across the country and to the New Hampshire State Warehouse, which is located in Bow, New Hampshire and they provide contract product capability to smaller clients who wish to craft their own spirits. So it offers an opportunity there. Uh, as I mentioned, they're also proposing to have a small tasting room, which is about eight to 10 seats, and a small retail shop for some merchandise for hats, t-shirts, glasses, et cetera. Uh, the tasting room initially is gonna be scheduled by appointment only. That might change as they start to get their operation up and running, but to, to start, it would be by uh, scheduled appointment only. And the tastings, uh, it's anticipated right now that they would occur Fridays 12 to 8 p.m., Saturday 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sundays 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Those are the only days for tastings. Uh, the business would include three to four employees, uh, and they currently store their uh, product in 53-gallon barrels, uh, and they plan to have between 300 and 500 barrels on site uh, when everything is up and running. Uh, deliveries vary, uh, but they average about two a week or about eight a month uh, for their normal operations. Uh, regarding the application and the facts supporting this request, and I mentioned to uh, Dana that I'd be happy to read it verbatim into the record if you'd like, but I know you have a, I'll have a copy of the application. I'll kind of just provide the synopsis, and then if you have any... Synopsis is fine. You do not have to read them okay. verbatim in the record. So, uh, part of it, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, explain how the proposed use would not diminish the surrounding property values. We don't feel it would uh, diminish any surrounding property values. As I mentioned, we're abutted by a number of various commercial and retail uses. Uh, it's an existing vacant space. There's no proposed site improvements at this time. That might be pending site plan review once we, if we get to that stage. Uh, it's not really highly, this section of the building is not really highly visible from High Street or, or across the street. Uh, there's a natural buffer along this side and this side. Um, and, and we think it actually will be a benefit to the community just providing a diverse mix of uses and using a, a, an existing vacant space. Uh, part two, explain how granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Uh, to be contrary to the public interest, the request must unduly and to a marked degree violate the basic zoning objectives of the zoning ordinance. The zoning ordinance for the city of Summersworth, as you know, was enacted to promote and protect public health, safety, convenience, and general we welfare in accordance with the master plan. The proposal for the use described herein would not threaten the public health or safety or general w welfare and is consistent with the applicable components of the, t of, sorry, the city master plan. 
Uh, the vision for Summersworth as described in the goals for the master plan includes making portions of the city, quote, socially and culturally energized and offer the opportunity for a diversity of business activity, as well as wanting to promote business development that encourages entrepreneurs, locally based businesses, and quality employment opportunities for all. Uh, the conformity with the master plan is supported by how the DSP will provide diversity of business along High, along high Street with a, a unique place to work and visit. The applicant, New England Barrel Company, has production and operations based in New Hampshire and has distributions in nine different states, including New Hampshire. Uh, the, the proposed use will also provide contract product capability to smaller clients in the craft spirit space, which will further promote locally based small businesses. In addition, granting the variance will not alter the character of the locality as the use will be established in an existing space that is currently vacant and the, pro the property is surrounded by various uh, commercial and retail businesses. Uh, part 3A, explain how little, literal enforcement of the permissions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship to the owner owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area because, and then part one is no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property. As adequate protection is provided to ensure that the development is in keeping with the spirit of the ordinance, no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance and the specific application of that provision to the property. Adhering to the table of permitted uses in the zoning ordinance in this instance will serve no public purpose. Granting the proposed variance will not affect the neighboring properties and does not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. In this specific case, full application of the permitted uses in the residential commercial district is not necessary to promote a valid public purpose as the overriding criteria is to protect the public health, safety, and welfare, which the proposed development does not impair. In addition, we believe it is in the best interest of the public to make use of an existing building, a portion of which is currently vacant. I also think it's important to note that the proposed use here is somewhat unique. It doesn't neatly fit into one of the categories that's within the, the table permitted uses. They really have a mix of light industrial, commercial, and retail use given that they do bottle and, and manufacture some goods, but they also have the retail component with their merchandise shop and some commercial activity with the tasting room. Um, part two, that the proposed use is a reasonable one. We feel that it is. Uh, it includes light industrial, commercial, and retail activities, which is what we're surrounded by. Um, there's also a brewery further down along High Street located within the same residential commercial district with a similar, similar facility to this. Uh, the DSP will consist of a bottling facility and storage of products, as well as a tasting room similar to the existing brewery. Uh, the DSP would bring in enthusiasts of spirits from surrounding areas, as well as other craft spirit distillers who require product capability, leading to more economic growth and encouragement of buying uh, local in the city of Summersworth. Uh, we feel the denial of the requested variance would result in an unnecessary hardship um, for the applicant, requiring them to find a different space in the city that would uh, fall within the zoning uh, ordinance requirements. It would represent a hardship to the owner to try to find somebody else to fill the vacant space, and we feel it'll be a loss to the public given that you're losing a, a, a unique business opportunity in the area. Um, Part 3B, it mentions that if the criteria are not established, please explain how unnecessary hardship exists. I think we've addressed that, those criteria, but I just would like to add again that I feel that it's a unique, new, a unique use. Uh, it offers something, uh, I think, that's beneficial to the public, and I think it's in, a, in an area in the city that, that makes sense. Uh, part 4, explain how granting the variance would do substantial justice. Uh, substantial justice, as you know, is done when the loss of the applicant by denying the variance exceeds any appreciable gain to the public by strictly enforcing the ordinance's requirements. Granting the variance would not create any health or public safety issues, and denying the requested variance would result in no appreciable gain to the general public as the current space is currently vacant. Uh, denying the variance, as I mentioned, would cause a loss to the applicant. They have to find an additional space. The owner, they'd have to find an additional tenant. And as I mentioned, uh, we feel that the public benefits from this use. Uh, certain, at, certain portions of the public would at least that might enjoy bourbon tasting and whiskey tasting. I'm not a whiskey connoisseur. I apologize. So I can't offer too much in that regard. But um, we don't feel that the proposed use will call any, cause any significant impact to the neighborhood as the facility, parking, and access all currently exist. And then part five, explain how the proposal is not contrary to the spirit of the ordinance. Again, the spirit of the city of Somerset zoning ordinance is to promote and protect public health, safety, and convenience and general welfare. Uh, the ordinance has goals of encouraging and most appropriate use for land, preventing the overcrowding of land, avoiding undue concentration of population, et cetera. I could go into all the points that we had listed out, but uh, in summary, you know, the existing building has uh, three uses. Within the building, two are currently being used. One is vacant. 
There is no change in undue concentration. There's no residential component as part of this project. We expect that there's going to be limited traffic impact given uh, the substantial daily traffic that's on High Street currently and what they currently experience for their peak hours of operation. Uh, we don't expect that this proposal is going to require the removal of any trees or other natural features. Uh, safety, uh, the site's already set up for fire safety and emergency services. Uh, this proposal assists in the economic provision, utilization, and expansion of public services, services excuse me. And the use is unique in that it will provide multiple sources of retail from the tasting room, the merchandise shop, and their bottling. Um, we did receive a copy of a letter today, which I'll bring up from the city of Dover. Uh, I think it was an environmental planner or environmental engineer with the city of Dover that had uh, brought up some questions or concerns that they thought that the zoning board might uh, want to uh, take into account as part of the decision. I think most of them, I, I discussed them with Dana briefly, I think most of them are more geared towards the, the planning level when if, if we should get to that stage. Uh, but to give you the synopsis of what they had uh, written, they mentioned that this potential pro this particular project falls within the watershed of Willard Pond, which is true, and it is in with, uh, within the city of Dover drinking water supply uh, within their aquifer. So they had a couple requests. One, that, the, that some kind of some stormwater treatment be enhanced. I don't believe that there's any stormwater treatment currently on the site. Most of the runoff hits the pavement and ends up in Willard Pond to the rear. So they asked if we could look at some improvements to uh, reduce phosphorus and other nutrients. Uh, the other comment was that they've they felt the spill prevention and maintenance plan should be provided. Um, they requested that we reduce winter salt usage and mentioned possibly hiring a green snow pro certified professional for winter maintenance. And then they mentioned a concern about whiskey fungus. And they noted that they don't know a lot about it, but they've heard that there's some problems, uh, I believe, for the residents in York, Maine as a result of this. So in response to these items, uh, we were just made aware of this letter today. I apologize. Uh, I, I believe most of these items can be addressed should be get through tonight and go to the planning board stage, they would be addressed with the planning board or planning staff. Uh, I think we can accommodate most, if not all of those uh, requests. Uh, some of them might fall more to the owner and or management team than the applicant themselves, but we're happy to work with staff and uh, see, what we can, see what we can do to accommodate their concerns. Response to the whiskey fungus, I'm not a whiskey fungus expert. I did do some research and I talked to the owner. Um, it's a type of fungus that basically grows on surfaces in the vicinity of distilleries, uh, spirits, maturation facilities, bonded warehouses, and bakeries. And basically during the process of aging whiskey and certain other liquors, there's a small portion that evaporates. Um, that's called angel's share. This airborne alcohol near barrel houses can lead to the growth of what is called whiskey fungus, and the fungus feeds on the sugar that's in the ethanol. My, my understanding is that these concerns are more geared towards uh, larger scale operations like Jack Daniels and, and those type of facilities down in Kentucky that produce 1,500 gallons, 1,500 barrels a day and store tens of thousands of barrels on site. This is a much smaller operation. I know the owner currently has a facility, I believe it's in Dover right now with 200 barrels. He's just a portion of what they store, uh, but they have no records of any whiskey fungus at that facility. Um, we're happy to try to provide some more information to staff uh, if they need it at a, at a later time. I only had enough time to get a couple bits of pieces of information okay. together. Uh, but we do feel that the proposed use is appropriate for the site. It makes use of an existing vacant space and provides a service to the community which doesn't currently exist. Uh, we do appreciate your consideration of this application. I'd like to thank Michelle and Dana for their assistance to date. And uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, so the way the process works is uh, we'll have you step away from the podium, see if anybody else in the audience wants to speak. And um, I believe Dana's going to address, Ms. Crosby's going to address the... Uh, the letter that you just talked about, just so we can okay. have it on the record. Do you mind if I just check with the owner to see if you wanted to add anything before you t turn it over to you, that you, piece of it? You're going to come back up and answer questions. Okay, so I'll let him. You're coming back up. Okay. I'll, I'll go sit down and wait for you. You can do that. You can do whatever, whatever. It's up to you. Uh, sorry. Hey, James. Hey, Chris. Hey, I'm not sure how much of that you could hear, and I apologize we're doing this this way for the board, but uh, did you have anything you wanted to add before they started asking questions? Those lines more than happy to answer. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's James. That's James Saunders, the president and founder of New England Barrel Company. Thank you. Ms. Crosley. Um, yep. Yeah. So we received today um, an email from Gretchen Young from the city of Dover um, to the attention of Michelle. And she said, as we discussed. Gretchen, who, who is she? Is Gretchen Young is the environmental projects manager with the city of Dover. Okay. 
Um, she said, as we discussed on the phone yesterday, the proposal for the New England Barrel Company falls within the watershed of both Willen Pond and the city of Dover's drinking water aquifer. Both of these resources are incredibly valuable to the city of Dover. Due to the proximity of the pond, we request that the applicants be asked to enhance stormwater treatment practices, particularly to reduce loading of phosphorus and other nutrients that may lead to cyan cyanobacteria problems within the pond. Also, we think it is important that the applicant have a robust spill prevention and maintenance plan. Because this project is within the drinking water aquifer, it is important to reduce winter salt usage to minimize chloride levels in the well water. To achieve this, we recommend the applicants be required to hire a green Snow Pro certified professional to do all winter operation maintenance in order to reduce the salt usage within the aquifer. For this particular applicant, we request that the City of Summersworth consider the consequences of whiskey fungus. This is not something that I am familiar with, except to note that it has plagued residents in New York, Maine that live near a similar distillery. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions or attend any meetings for future discussions with this project. Gretchen Young, PE of City Environmental Projects Manager, City of Dover. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Crosley. Would anyone else in the public like to come up and address? Okay, the applicant, please come forward. Questions for the applicant? Mr. Brooks. So you mentioned that your business, uh, potential business here doesn't neatly fit the categories of our zoning. Um, <clears throat> From what you described, it sounds like you wouldn't really be serving drinks as like a bar would. It's Correct. more of a tasting thing. So Correct. it's it's not like people would be coming there for drinks, multiple of them, just to sample the product, essentially. That is correct. That's my understanding of how the business operates. You schedule a tasting to taste a certain bourbon or yep. mix that they have. Right. And besides that, the distillery, you said that it's not really a distillery? So my understanding, I can have James speak to that. My understanding is, is that when you get the license, they call it a, a distillery plant. But even, but that covers a, a range of uh, functions within the building. You might not do all of them. So they don't plan to distill at this particular facility. They're really taking in product in barrels and, and blending it and then bottling it and selling it. So they're not actually distilling anything like, a, like some other facilities would. Yeah, so, so my understanding was it'd be basically a way to mix particular flavorings to cater, to cater to certain businesses and create a unique taste flavor Correct. labeling and so on so it's more of a niche business looking to bottle yes and i apologize if i misspoke I, I didn't mean to state that it doesn't that it doesn't fit in any one of the categories it's just that they they really have a combination of uses and no, one I, doesn't just fit i it's kind of agree it fits several of them from what yeah. I'm, that's why i'm asking just what the major components are yeah. so I can have a better understanding of where it would be fit in my opinion okay. so so there's no distillery as far as the actual producing of alcohol it's already produced you just simply mix it and flavor it and rebottle it correct okay. Okay. questions for the applicant mr. Hilton How many barrels did you say you were going to have on site? Uh, right now, he's estimating when he's fully up and running between three and 500. Okay, thank you. Mr. Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for taking my question. <clears throat> so, um, this, us permitting this, could it become a distillery? I don't believe so. I'll, let me, I'm going to just double check with you. Sure. Hey, James, you still there? I am. I don't know if you heard that question. The question about would you ever distill at this property, because right now I explained that you basically are taking all these uh, totes and barrels and you're basically blending and mixing and creating certain flavors and then bottling and selling them. Um, is there, are there any plans to ever distill at this location? Uh, currently, there are no plans to distill at this location. OK. So the question is, could you turn it into a distillery? I guess that would be a question for planning staff. Maybe uh, I don't know if, if we got to that stage. If part of their approval well, if, says if that we any approved it with no conditions, the answer would be yes. Okay. I, it's not that I have. I don't have hot burn with that. I just want to know if it, 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 right now, if you approved it, it would be it would be allowed unless we put a restriction yeah. on it. Not that I have anything against it. 
And just one more comment. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure if I was still on speaker. Yes, so um, this, this gets into uh, a deeper level of, you know, just the the, 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 the distillation process. But effectively, um, the first phase of distillation is very similar to the first or, or to, to, to the uh, the process of brewing beer. Right. So um, basically, 50 percent of it is the exact same process from th- that you see with all the breweries that we have around. Um, again, I don't just given the size of the space, I don't anticipate. Uh, going into the distillation process, I'm not saying that will never happen because if one of the uh, one of the neighbors, potentially like a tire warehouse or what have you, decides to leave, um, and it does open us up to the opportunity, we would look to go back to. Um, Summersworth and, and potentially say, hey, uh, we do now have space, and if we've been good, you know, members of the community and what have you, and um, have an opportunity to continue to grow within Summersworth, that's what we would choose to do, uh, assuming we have the support of the town. But right now, based upon the space that we're looking at, um, I don't see us having the room to physically uh, enter into this, the distilling process while uh, maintaining our current operations. Thank you. If I may continue. Yep, you may. Thank you. Um, yeah, one more comment. That is the most detailed breakdown that I've ever heard sitting on this detail on sitting on this C B A of the criteria. I mean, I don't know if the other members can agree, but good for you. That was a heck of a breakdown on that. Good Thank for you. Very you. Much. And like I said, I just want to reliterate Hope my client heard that. I so. yeah. I, I just want to reiterate that I'm not against the distillery. Uh, I'm just I just wanted to know if that could be forthcoming and thank you very much for taking my questions thank you mr chairman yep. other further questions so i got a question for you so part of the criteria as we call it is the hardship criteria and what part of the hard, hardship criteria states that the, the property this property needs to be burdened such that the zoning is unfairly applied to this property as compared to other properties in the area. So what's different about this property that it uniquely supports industrial, slash light industrial uses versus other properties in the area? Uh, well, I, I think my answer was really that given that where the property sits and what we're currently surrounded by, because there's a number of other uses that we're surrounded by that don't meet the current zoning that either, I mean, even one of the uses on our property needed to get a special exception just to allow the use there. And so. Uh, I don't know that there's other areas in the city that that allow this type of a mix of uses. Um, we thought it was a, a unique use, uh, and the use itself, as I mentioned, is it's not really just an industrial use; it's also a retail and commercial use. I don't know if I if I could put percentages to it as to as to what is what, but I don't know if that's answering your question. But we we really feel that that's the crux of it. Is that it's an it's an adequate location. We're surrounded by other similar type uses. Uh, there are you know we've got gas stations across the street. We've got uh, auto parts, um, uh, car repair facilities. Uh, there's another gas station further up the street. There's the shopping plaza to the northeast. So it's not like we're situated in a in a what I would call the residential component of the residential commercial district. Uh, I I totally understand the the intent of the um, zoning ordinance, but I don't know that it, it ever contemplated this type of a use, which is, I don't think it's very high intensive use, um, but there needs to be a place to put, to put something like this. Okay. Another question, Mr. Ferdat. Question for city staff. Is there a zone in this city that would allow this combination of uses being retail, commercial, and industrial? The commercial industrial district would permit um, industrial slash light industrial, restaurant, and retail usage. Okay, thank you. Further questions for the applicant? And the business district. I'm Plan. sorry, you said and the business district? Yep. Yeah. Anything else? You all set? I am all set, yep. Okay. Further comments by the applicant? Uh, well, again, I, I thank everybody for their time. Um, and if I can answer any more questions, please, please let me know. Um, again, I, I, we do feel it's an appropriate use. I, I don't know that the light, I know it's been deemed a light industrial industrial use based on their bottling aspect, but I don't know if that was really the intent of the zoning ordinance definition of light industrial. I think it was more 
my take on it is more geared towards your actual industrial uses that are really manufacturing goods, bulk storage, uh, bulk processing. This is a, a, a much smaller niche type of proposed use, if you will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. With that, I'm going to close public hearing. Discussion by the board. Mr. Fredette. I'm in favor of this. Um, I, I understand the struggle with the hardship criteria, but I guess the way I would look at that one is it's already got an automotive use in that building where he's looking to be, from what I can tell, off of High Street in a retail area without much road frontage kind of blocked out in the back. I think the hardship potentially created here is it's going to be a hard rent to fill with something else. Um, I also think that the, the ordinance itself, in some ways, not every use fits perfectly. And then I think that is our job as a board is to kind of use common sense to say this does kind of work. And you've also got a brewery functioning at the old Star Lumber property. I think it's optimum now, so I don't think this is uncharacteristic of anything going on on High Street. And we seem to have a lot of, in conclusion, you know, we, we talk about kind of the evolution of High Street from farmland to what it is now. And I think it's one of these areas in the city where if we look at something like Mally Farm, we can be pretty distinct on how that was developed purposefully, but High Street you kind of have to take on a case-by-case -case basis because it's evolved from a residential area to commercial over the years. And without getting lost in the details, maybe the zoning has or has not kept up. So what, you, you, what you're saying is it meets all five criteria? Yes. Okay. Mr. Vincent. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. You know, I have to agree with the applicant, um, you know, blending liquids. I mean... You know, you think about uh, the reason why we, we, we have these zoning rules and, and the criteria or the, um, the breakdown of, like, light industrial, what it have it. You know, there's probably more noise when you think about surroundings and you're trying to stay light industrial. There's probably more noise in a muffler place or a, or a, or a tire place than there is with blending liquids. So I'm totally in favor of this. Um, I do believe it meets the five criteria, and I don't believe that it's going to be any type of nuisance or any type of problem to the city um, whatsoever, uh, or, or the zone for that matter. Um, so I'm definitely in favor of it. Um, blending liquids is probably going to be a real quiet type of process. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. For a discussion. Mr. Brooks. You know, and obviously hardship's always the hardest thing to meet with this with the criteria that we have here and this isn't like a dimensional requirement or something like that <clears throat> where I think hardship plays in more you know where 3a talks more about you know how little enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship so you know we're, we're just talking about a use here and no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property. So, you know, we're, we're not talking about constructing a building that already exists. It's simply just the use within the building. And, you know, again, it's how do you fit this into it with all these, I mean, we've got, what, 28, 33 different criteria here, but there's a lot more than 33 different businesses out there. And then we get 11 different ones on industrial. And I just think that, you know, businesses nowadays are having to adapt and find niche businesses. And a lot of times they blend multiple uses and much like we have here. So again, I, you know, does it fit industrial, light industrial? I suppose so because you're bottling and applying a label to it, but that's pretty minimal when you look at industrial uses. Uh, I'm not even sure I'd call it light industrial. It's very minimal. Um, so, again, I, I think that, you know, with the development of High Street as it has developed over the years and so on, yes, I kind of would also agree that zoning hasn't kept up with it. And I think just the classifications of businesses zoning hasn't kept up with, in my opinion, too. But that's all another topic. But otherwise, I don't see anything here that it doesn't 
satisfy as far as the five criteria go. Okay, very good. Mr. Perkins. Yeah, I think adding on to what Mr. Brooks says, um, the definition for the residential commercial is um, uh, existing residential uses are adequately protected from new non-residential uses. Um, and I think in this area, there are not really any residential uses um, adjacent to that. So I think as you know, the hardship, the fair and substantial relationship uh, between the general public purposes, I still think we're meeting the purpose of this zoning by protecting residential areas and that the proposed use is a re reasonable one. So I say I am for it and believe it meets all five criteria. Okay. For discussion, Mr. Fredette. I mean, I'd also like to comment that the, the size as presented is also something I consider. I, I wouldn't consider five, four to 5,000 square feet quite large enough to create a large industrial use and and off of what mr brooks said i think it's just trying to make something fit that doesn't i'm totally in favor of this okay other comments mr hilton ditto <laughs> very well <laughs> very well any for, for this any other discussion we need a last it's always <laughs> you know what do you Make well, I want to give up. you a last opportunity because you don't get, after we make a motion, you won't get a chance to talk. So I, I understand. I'm just, you, I'm kidding. Give you that opportunity. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Chair, will entertain a motion. Mr. Fredette. Wait. Oh, sorry. Regional oh. impact. Regional impact. Is what Thank I you, was Brad. Do. Regional impact. I, I knew it was going to go through that. Mr. Crosby, <laughs> based on a letter from Dover, what do we feel about regional impact? They were notified to, they're a direct to butter. Um, it would be up to the board if they felt that there was regional impact based off of that for it. So what criteria would you use to say that it was regional impact? And I'm just trying to, so they, they're claiming there is regional, or they, they, they want certain criteria, but it's, it's not really, if I'm correct, that's Summersworth land over there, correct? That they own land in Summersworth? Correct. Yes, right. they own land in Summersworth. They own land in Summersworth. So essentially, they're a Summersworth land uh, owner. Correct. And they're speaking as a Summersworth land owner. Well, uh, ahead, Mr. I may disagree. I think what they're speaking of is on behalf of the citizens of Dover for the impact that it would or would not have on the watershed and and use of water resources at Willand Pond. But I don't know how... I mean, I can see it would have regional impact. I guess we've never covered this as a board as to, okay, so it has regional impact. Where do we go from here? I guess is the question. If we agree it has regional impact, sorry, where do we go from here? If you feel that the project has regional impact, then um, you would vote um, which community it is. You'd make the motion that it does have potential for regional impact you would indicate who it's having potential for a regional impact and why that community is the potential for regional impact. It would then stop the hearing. We would have to notify Stratford, Re we would notify those that community that was identified as a regional impact. Um, and Stratford um, Regional Planning would also be notified of it. They do a review for regional impact um, and then the so the other community would be notified and then you would continue the you would continue the application to the next meeting and typically um, regional planning provides some sort of comment based off of the impact of re potential for regional impact so the first step has already been done but the other community has been even if there is or isn't the other community has been notified dover's been notified correct and provided input correct mr brooks so is there a regional impact vote at the planning board level too? Yes. So if we missed this or something came up after we went either way with this, it could be brought back up at the planning board as well? The planning board could feel that there is potential for regional impact. Okay. So I, I kind of agree that this is a, the abutting property is obviously owned by Dover, but it's Summersworth land. But yes, I understand that it could 
affect the drinking water, but they've got a whole department to oversee that. So I would think that if it was that much of a concern, that department would be here to speak on their behalf. Mr. Fredette? I also would make the argument that the regional impact here is probably more on the shoulders of the planning board rather than the zoning board parking lot maintenance etc cetera, etc cetera, are not normally within the purview of this board okay. so mr crosley another question for you so based on the letter from dover and their their, their issues it appeared uh, would you would you think that the planning board would, should, would be the appropriate place to to address those issues or is there any of those issues that the zba should address um let me look at it again um they do appear to me to be more per, um, pertaining to a site plan. It could be that if you wanted, um, similar to um, with the Firestone property, when they saw variances and special exceptions, the board chose to put a condition that the planning board consider um, something specifically. Um, in that case, it was consider something to protect the neighbors for noise. Um, you could put a something upon that if that felt appropriate to you that the planning boards pay special attention to okay but you don't see anything in particular no these um the stormwater would be something under the site plan review regulations that would be impacted um and spill maintenance um plans would potentially be something that one of the departments would request during srtc public works um and or fire would typically like seeing those types of informations. Okay. Mr. Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'm a little confused with stormwater runoff. Stormwater runoff has existed since the building's been there. Are you saying stormwater runoff with what? With distillery material? Is that what you're saying? No, what you're um what you're indicating that is existing. Um, we do have redevelopment criteria within our site plan regulations. Right. So if the site is being redeveloped or right. something, it may trigger requirement for some sort of improvement at the property. Right. Or they Unde could seek a waiver. Let's say the regulations the have been updated by the state that, right. that if you have a 100 square foot parking lot, you now have to have a catch basin. Understand. It wasn't in place when they built it. Understand. Like Thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, definition. Thank you, Mr. Pradet. Will this go for our full? site plan at the zoning board or will this just be staff reviewed um we will it will be either by minor site plan with the srtc or full planning board it does depend upon a few things of where it falls within the criteria of the site plan review regulations but we have um, discussed with the applicant that there would be a level of site plan review that would be required can we put that as a condition on regional impact that it be that it receives site plan review or is it just going to be automatically triggered and thus redundant we wouldn't put that on regional impact we could no. put that on the variance that it be reviewed by the planning board so we would then find that there is regional impact no we'd find that there isn't because if we do then we're stopped so if we don't find if we could not find regional impact so we can't we can't intentionally pass the pass it the baton down the road we kick the bucket can down the road if we think there's regional impact we need to vote that there is regional impact so though it'll get a second shot at it at the planning board we can't get you have to make a decision either you feel it is or it isn't right but i guess my question is is the regional impact regional impact from a zoning perspective or a planning perspective and if it's from a planning perspective then to us it does it then have regional impact I would say it'd be the use. So right. the variance would allowing the variance for this use to go into this place. Do you think that that use has a potential for regional impact? Right. So example, if this was an industrial building going in right next to a residential area that was in Dover and we were on the property line, that would have maybe regional impact. Right. But it seems like the city's it, it, it seems like the the response or the tenor of the response to me is not coming from a property owner it's coming from a representative of the city of dover on behalf of the city's water interest this isn't we don't want this because we have i, I don't know i i that that's my thought is that this is being brought on behalf of 
the citizens of the city for absolutely because it is. It's absolutely it is. You are one hundred percent correct. Yes. Okay, Mr. Brooks. I, w I wish they had more guidance for the regional impact thing. Obviously, if we were talking about increasing traffic ridiculously, I would certainly think that's regional impact. Um, I don't think that a small little business occupying a few thousand square feet with very few customers coming in and out is going to have a regional impact. Could it have a regional impact as a spill potential environmental hazard? Yeah, and just about every other business along that corridor, too. And I don't see anybody freaking out trying to close them down over it, especially considering there's automotive repair going in on in the same building. So, Ms. Crosley, if, if the board so choose, could the board require a full planning board review of it, of this application? I'm not sure if we're out of line if we did that. To request that it go... Instead of the SRCT, go to the planning... Or does it matter? Does it really? Does it? Is it going to gain much? I mean, I'm just trying to understand. There's certain criteria set forth in the site plan re review regulations based off of um, intensity of the development, size of it, things like that. If they have to seek waivers, um, whether or not that would, or there is a discretionary piece that if the city planner, who's would be Michelle, yep. if she feels that the project is more intensive than the prior use, then that it could be required to go to the planning board. Let me ask um, a question a little bit differently. Is there anything going to be looked at, anything additional to be looked at, one ver in the SRCT versus the planning board, or is all the same, really, the same criteria and di a different group of people looking at it? If one's a subset of the other, or is there a, or is it more intense for one? Typically, the planning board's a little more intense, but it is usually all about the same information because to go to minor site plan, they are not seeking any waivers, so it has to be really like a complete package for what that is. Um, if there's any waivers being sought from those regulations, then it has to go to the planning board. For the record, I, I'm not trying to get lost in the weeds on this one. I just, this is the first time we've had been approached by a city that's my only comment and this isn't the first time we've had a variance even for this building or this corridor all right further discussion on regional impact chair will entertain a motion on regional impact mr brooks i move that the variance request for new england barrel company does not have potential for regional impact. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second that the, the, the application does not have regional impact. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion that the application does not have regional impact, raise your right hand. 5-0. Passes. Okay, move on to the actual variance. So any further discussion on the variance? Mr. Fredette. Okay, okay go, for, go for the motion. Absolutely. After review of the application, the file, and all the information presented to the board, I feel that all five criteria have been satisfied for the reasons discussed tonight, and I move that the request of New England Barrel Company for a variance from Table 4.A.4 .4 to allow an industrial slash light industrial use, specifically a distilled spirits plant for a property located at 497 High Street, be granted. I second that. We have a motion. We have a second. Discussion on the motion. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be voting against it, though I support the application by the letter of the law. I cannot find anything in this prop that's unique to this property that, you, that burdens it from the zoning restrictions of having an industrial complex. So although our zoning ordinances may be deficient, uh, I would support this project, but I have to not be, by the letter of law. Fair discussion. All those in favor of the motion, which is to approve the variance. Oh, I, have, I have a question. Yep, um, should I know there's been some discussion from the applicant about increasing size. Should we put a limitation on the motion that it be the size presented, or is that, again, redundant? Ms. Crosley. Um, if you feel that it's an important aspect, you should put it as a um, condition of approval or part of your motion basically specify it in the motion it's somewhere motion. I would like I'd like to amend my motion to um, include that this be 
the size and manner presented tonight. As presented tonight. As presented tonight. Okay. Mr. Vincent, will you accept that? Second that? No, I don't. Can I explain? You can, um, but since it's a motion, since we have a kind of a motion on the board, does anyone then want to second it? It's okay. I'll second it. Okay, second by Mr. Brooks. Discussion by the motion. Go ahead, Mr. Vincent. The only reason I won't second it is because um, I feel sometimes in business, business needs to expand. That building is only so big. If they had to make any additions to the building or property, they'd have to come before the, the planning board. Am I correct, Dana? Most likely, yes. So it's like it's only as big as what the box is, and I can accept right now how big the box is. I don't think it's going to be uh, overwhelming. Uh, uh, they're going to take a piece of the building now. Business grows, so I don't want to hinder them or, or disability them, so to speak. Uh, and I would be in favor of just kind of – I love the first motion because most likely to do an expansion, they're going to have to come before some board, and that's why – I'm not going to second it. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Fredette. I, I'd just like to comment. I think I'm moved by two notions. The first that the I try to be very specific in my motions because these variances do follow the land and live on in perpetuity, number one. Number two, I think hearing the hardship concerns of the chair of the hardship criteria while I think they're overridden here in my opinion. I think it's a legitimate enough concern to put the condition in the motion um, here because changing, I mean, as, as was stated, if the muffler shop leaves and suddenly 4,000 square feet could become nine, it could be change the tenor of the business. And this is a variance. For a discussion on the motion. Okay, so we have a motion before us to approve the variance. Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. Unfortunately, as, as, as the uh, alternate member, you're, once a motion's on the table, unfortunately, you can't, can't speak, unfortunately. Okay, so we have a motion on the table, uh, which is to approve the variance with the condition that it's as, as presented tonight um, for the, which is the second half of the building. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. If three, opposed? to myself and Mr. Vincent. The, the variance the mo passes, the variance is granted, and you receive commu the uh, communication from the planning director. The offices of development. We're all set, you We're all set, you're done. Thanks. Oh, we got to finish our meeting. That's all right, that's all right, we understand. Any other new business that, that may come before the board? Ms. Crosley? None. Any new business from the board members? Oh, one thing. Go ahead, Ms. Crosley. Uh, next week, Thursday, September 14th, we are having a housing forum, um, which is to get housing feedback. Um, it's part of our master plan chapter for housing update. It is at the Summersworth Black Box Theater at the high school. Um, we would love to have you attend. We'd love to have all the public attend. It is, um, if you can RSVP to the event, there's information on our website. If you have questions, you can reach out to planning staff. But we do please hope you can all come and to tell friends and community members. Thank you. A old business, a new business from board members. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Brooks, second by Mr. Fred, Fredette. All those in favor, raise your right hand. We are adjourned. Maybe another half the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Good seeing you. Nice.